Ready for some fresh air? We may have a body waiting for us in the desert. The caller was anonymous, but the directions were specific. GPS coordinates, no less. Since it's a remote crime scene, take the mobile analysis unit. It'll help you analyze the evidence quickly in the field. And you'll be working with Greg Sanders. Before you showed up, he was the new kid on the CSI block. His years of experience in the DNA lab have proven very useful in the field. Good luck. Okay, even though this guy looks like he's been dead a while, there still may be some valuable information left. Whoa, somebody beat us to this guy. This isn't exactly a National Forest Service campsite. This spot's used by college kids who like partying in the great outdoors. Nobody checks your ID for a beer. I know this isn't your first time out, but Grissom will have my hide if we don't follow strict procedure. Which means, document the body first. Vic's face up on a sleeping bag. No sign he's been moved or of a struggle. Could this be death by natural causes? Somehow I have a feeling this isn't a natural feature of this area. Fly larva. If you were wondering what it takes to make Grissom smile, this is it. Third stage of development. This means the body's been decomposing five days. Well, something left a mark. Slightly mummified with black discoloration. Strange. Way to be thorough. Looks like the area is clean.
I haven't seen one of these in a while. An old school insulin bottle. Always nice to have a name written on a piece of evidence at a crime scene, huh? So we have a bruise on the forehead and a boot print in the tent. Maybe a fellow camper whacked the Vic upside the head, then rifled through his gear. Way to be thorough. Looks like the area is clean. This is my first time using the mobile analysis unit in the field. Imagine a whole lab in your trunk. What was this when I was a lab rat? Woman's hiking boot, size 5. So a woman was out here with him at some point. Lipstick for sure. But do you know how many flavors are out there? Let me tell you. Thousands. Old lab story. Dried residue on the bottle checked out for insulin. No other chemicals present. Insulin. Maybe our Vic was a diabetic. I think we've gathered all the time-sensitive materials we need. We can head back to HQ anytime you want.
Sure, I'll send a team right out. Still working on that. I found water in the lungs, so first glance suggests possible asphyxia from drowning. Don't quote me. Other parts of this autopsy don't add up. Another element that may or may not be important, Tox indicates levels of Jimson wheat tea. We checked his lower intestinal tract for seeds and came up with a garden of toxicity, levels of which you can verify in the lab. Yes, he was. Uh, this would explain why he had an insulin bottle with him at the crime scene. But diabetes had nothing to do with his death. I can give you a decent seat in the ballpark, thanks to those blowfly larvae. Rigidity and lividity indicate the body's not been moved post-mortem. TOD estimate, five days. Not a factor. No broken skin, no brain hemorrhaging, or skull fractures. One thing, though, the bruise discoloration was still forming, so the blunt force trauma occurred several hours before the time of death. Why? You think that's a first? I had a case where an autopsy revealed baby rats gestating in the stomach. Luckily, that's not the case here. Maybe mommy didn't find a suitable nesting spot inside her vic. Here's your reference prints and DNA. Trace the name on the prescription to a condo at 337 Fallen Road, Las Vegas. According to records, he lives there with his wife, one Carla Mitchell. Here's a surprise. Our victim has a local celebrity for a mother, real estate developer Emily Hansen. One in the same. Lives out of Charleston Hills, a gated community. She doesn't have my vote, but you don't need to bring that up. These results from the Jimson weed seeds show a non-lethal amount. Based on these levels, he probably ingested this hours before he died. The DNA analyzer will tell you what you need. We've done all we can with that item.
Las Vegas Crime Lab, Mrs. Mitchell. We're sorry to have to bother you at a time like this, but I'm sure you understand it's necessary. Of course, of course. But you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little out of focus. I haven't even begun to come to grips with Derek's death. Seems so unreal. And just when things were going so well. He was due home today from his camping trip. And I was planning his favorite meal for him. <laughs> Do you know what happened? We're trying our best to figure it out, Mrs. Mitchell. Actually, yes. He liked to go backpacking once or twice a month. He'd take a bus, hike as far as he could go, and get out under God's great sky, as he said. Not that he was religious, but the desert held a certain spirituality for him. I never went with him. I may live in a desert town, but I'm a city girl, and I don't like getting my hands dirty. Last time I saw him... Oh, God, that's such an awful sound. Must have been... Yes, it was over breakfast, right before he left. I was going to work. He told me he'd be gone out camping for a while, starting that very afternoon. <laughs> that was typical of Derek. Mr. Spontaneity. Uh, six days ago? Yes, six days. He needed to stop at his mom's house on the way out to the desert to pick up his gear. We didn't have room to store it here. His mom was willing, which is a little surprising since Derek and his mother aren't exactly close. I don't normally wear hiking boots at all, but when I do, it would be size 5. Why? We found a boot print at the crime scene. Do you have any hiking boots we can use to rule you out? No, I told you I'm not a boot person. Are you saying that... that another woman may have been out camping with him? No, we are simply checking all possibilities. Yeah, it's one of those habits I can't break him of. Usually takes a little for use in the wilderness. I'm wearing it right now. But my lips have natural color, so sometimes I wear a clear shade. And never red. I guess you know I'm an attorney. I think maybe you've testified in one or two cases of mine against my client. But that's the way the game is played, right? Anyway, I've been consumed with my next big trial looming. Now I know in a case like this, you always look at the spouse first. But let me save you a step. No way could I have driven out to the desert. Even if I had known where in God's name he'd set up camp. I just haven't had the time. I hate to stand on legal formalities, but... As much as I want you to find out what happened to Derek, I need to limit the chaos in my life. I'll have to insist on a warrant to show cause before I let you toss my house. I'm sorry. We understand. Derek was pretty easygoing, and I can't think of... No, wait, there is one person, though enemy is a little strong. You see, our contractor quit recently after he and Derek got into it. Name's Lou Astor, and he is one sleazy character. Frankly, much as I'd like to get our kitchen remodeling done, I'm glad that creep is out from underfoot. Where can we find this contractor? At Ravenson Construction. I even remember the address from paying his padded bills. 5311 Seffield Road. Let's find something to compare it to. Our Vic rolled his own. Burn mark underneath suggests it was smoked at the crime scene, dropped and burned right into the fabric. You'll want a different tool for that. Salt-like substance. How to get on here?
Well, our mystery substance is not in the database, but it appears to have been mixed in with the tobacco. So either someone else did it, or the victim did it himself. Could be an amp joint, as they say on the street. Tobacco mixed with a narcotic. Basuko, on the other hand, is street for cocaine paste residue. Sprinkled on a cigarette like powdered sugar on a donut. We've done all we can with that item. You know I am, and you obviously know what a bad time this is for me. I've lost my son, and I've already spent several hours with you LVPD people this morning, if you'll excuse me. We're with the crime lab, Mrs. Hansen, investigating your son's death. As much as we hate intruding into your time of grief, we need to ask a few questions. A week ago, N no, six days, right before this latest, this last ill-advised desert excursion. I saw him when he picked up his camping gear. My son was willfully unusual. You'll need to be specific. Unusual as in a bruise on his forehead? I noticed nothing of that nature. No injuries, no contusions. Although if Derek ended up that way, I can't say I'm surprised. Considering the poor judgment he showed, backpacking into that wasteland of lowlifes and druggies. Perhaps Derek felt at home among that trash. Drugs and parties were how he spent his college days. Never grew up, I'm afraid. You think I'm cruel? Cold? Assume what you like, but I'm a mother who lost her child long, long ago. Here at home working. I have an office here. Lou Astor was. He's a contractor who's done a lot of work for me over the years. Recently I recommended him to Derek and his wife. But when Mr. Astor stopped by that day, he mentioned that he'd been fired by them. The contractor was gone by the time Derek stopped here. You don't think Astor could be responsible? I know he's a bit of a roughneck and has a certain reputation, but he's always done reliable work for me. I'd hate to think. A disaster area. My darling daughter-in-law, Carla, is a 14-carat tramp. Derek only married her because I disapproved. Sheer rebellion. Simply sheer rebellion. It's the safest bed in Las Vegas that that little slut is sleeping around on my son. That I will gladly bestow you. Take it and go. In the first place, my son and I had no financial difficulties. Our conflicts were philosophical. In the second place, that doesn't even sound like me. I would hardly threaten my own son. And even if I had, would I do so in such a cryptic fashion? Just to eliminate you. I'm sure you expect me to cooperate fully in your efforts to find out what happened to my son. And I do commend your public service. But as you may know, I'm a candidate for public office myself, and I intend not to be embarrassed. You will follow the rules. It will take a warrant to get my fingerprints or to search my house. And now, if there's nothing else, please leave me to my thoughts and my sorrow. 